It's amazing. SpaceX has achieved an incredible milestone. They successfully captured the Super Heavy, accomplishing what is arguably one of the most incredible engineering feats in history. Now let's dive into today's episode of NAR Studio. We'll thoroughly analyze the capture attempt, examine how Elon Musk executed the shot so effectively, and examine the FAA's response. Standing at an impressive height of nearly 400 feet, 121 meters, the uncrewed Starship, consisting of Starship 30 and Super Heavy B-12, launched at dawn from the southern tip of Texas near the Mexican border. It flew gracefully in an arc over the Gulf of Mexico, reminiscent of the four previous starships that met their demise shortly after launch or while descending into the ocean. The most recent launch in June was a huge success, marking a significant milestone by completing its flight without any explosions. This time, SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk upped the ante and the ante. The company successfully returned its first stage booster to the launch pad after lifting off just seven minutes earlier. The launch tower, equipped with large metal arms commonly referred to as chopsticks, successfully caught the descending booster, 232 feet, or 71 meters, high. The tower successfully caught the rocket. Musk made the announcement via X. Gwyn's heartfelt tweet summed up his emotions perfectly. I don't know what to say. Company employees erupted in joy as the booster was slowly lowered into the arms of the launch tower. Even in this modern era, what we just witnessed is truly miraculous, said SpaceX's Dan Hoyt, who was present near the launch site. I feel a real vibration right now. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks a major milestone in engineering history, brought to you by Kate Tyson from SpaceX HQ in Hawthorne, California. The launch window begins at 7 a.m. or 12 p.m. GMT from the company's space station in Boca Chica, Texas. Of course, please provide the text you'd like to see rewritten, and I'll be happy to assist you. The Luftwaffe incident transpired at precisely 7.25 a.m. With the Raptor engines functioning flawlessly, the second stage of the Starship was propelled into orbit, heading toward the Indian Ocean, west of Australia, where it would aim to land on a water platform. Meanwhile, after detaching from the Starship at an altitude of approximately 74 kilometers, the Super Heavy booster made its way back to the launch pad, where it was deftly captured by two colossal robotic arms. The decision to attempt the catch was made within minutes as the Super Heavy booster descended, since SpaceX had indicated that the flight director needed to make a real-time decision using manual control to determine whether to proceed with the landing. Both the booster and the launch tower needed to be in optimal and stable condition. Otherwise, the booster risked plummeting into the bay much like in previous attempts. All aspects were evaluated and deemed prepared for landing. This underscores the substantial risks associated with capturing the rocket using Mechazilla, as its success was not assured in advance. Thus, the decision demanded a level of decisiveness and courage that not everyone possesses. A heartfelt thank you to the SpaceX team for reaching such remarkable milestones. Your dedication and innovation continue to inspire us all. The landing process for the Super Heavy took place with remarkable speed, as showcased in the video shared by SpaceX on its X page, completing in just one minute. Upon achieving supersonic velocities, the Super Heavy commenced its landing burn, igniting 13 engines in a staggered sequence radiating from the center outward. This approach not only ensured balanced control, but also effectively decreased the rocket's descent speed. The booster descended vertically until T plus 6 minutes and 32 seconds, halting a mere 5 seconds shy of the optimal position. It descended utilizing three engines in their optimal configurations. Only then did it proceed toward the tower for the catch. Of course, please provide the text you'd like me to rewrite, and I'll be happy to assist you. This experience was nothing short of remarkable, particularly considering that in worst-case scenarios, SpaceX has the ability to mitigate damage to its launch tower. The foresight and innovation displayed are commendable. The rhythmic motion of the three engines facilitated the Super Heavy's fluid movement, enabling the blades to achieve a pristine gentleness. Amidst thunderous cheers and palpable excitement from SpaceX employees, this moment marks a significant milestone, not only for SpaceX, but also for the entire U.S. space industry. 
Previously, apprehensions regarding the sonic boom generated by the Super Heavy upon landing, which could potentially impact nearby areas, compelled the FAA to postpone the permit for Starship Flight 5. Nonetheless, SpaceX debunked this apprehension, and with their recent triumph, the launch was ultimately able to proceed ahead of schedule. We thank the FAA for issuing the launch permit. However, the agency ought to consider the discredited incurs by causing delays for SpaceX. Nonetheless, certain challenges regarding this landing persist. The sole discernible issue faced by Super Heavy B-12 was the ignition of flames in the lower section near the engines. This issue might have been related to the rocket's descent speed and a lack of synchronization during the engine restart, which resulted in the flames being pushed back toward the booster. The fire originated in the aft section of the booster, likely at the quick disconnect connection point. Even after the booster was ensnared by the chopstick arms, the flames persisted momentarily before gradually subsiding. Additionally, Musk tweeted that some of the outer engine nozzles are slightly warped due to extreme heat and strong aerodynamic forces. Fortunately, these issues are easily fixable. Minor issues with the super heavy booster are certainly to be anticipated, given that Starship remains a work in progress. SpaceX will need to attempt this catch several more times to evaluate the booster's reusability potential. Once SpaceX fulfills its objective of reusing the booster, which is an inevitable milestone, the world's largest rocket will undoubtedly become fully reusable. Although utilizing the upper stage may require additional time, SpaceX's impressive ability to construct spacecraft at an accelerated pace will mitigate any issues in the near future. With regards to the second stage of Starship, it proceeded with its flight following the successful separation from the booster. The Starship was designed for a controlled descent into the Indian Ocean, where it would ultimately submerge, closely adhering to the trajectory established during its prior flight. It re-entered Earth's atmosphere approximately 50 minutes post-liftoff. The ship subsequently executed a belly flop maneuver, descending horizontally toward the ground. Utilizing its onboard engines, it then reoriented itself vertically for landing. During the previous flight, the flaps responsible for managing the landing process nearly burned up and disintegrated. Although one of the flaps seemed to sustain damage during re-entry, the Starship ultimately remained intact and executed a gentle landing on the water. It subsequently exploded, as anticipated. SpaceX did not intend to pursue a recovery of the spacecraft. For this flight, SpaceX has enhanced the software and refined Starship's thermal protection, enabling it to better endure the extreme temperatures of re-entry. This approach demonstrated its efficacy as the re-entry process was executed seamlessly. Despite experiencing another explosion, the remarkable aspect was that it landed nearly exactly where it was intended. A camera mounted on a buoy deployed by SpaceX in the ocean recorded these poignant final moments. It was an utterly breathtaking spectacle, one that I, along with my fellow space enthusiasts, will undoubtedly cherish in our memories for years to come. With this remarkable achievement, our support for SpaceX continues to strengthen. This joy marks merely the beginning, as SpaceX is poised to forge ahead with remarkable progress in the future. One of the upcoming major developments to anticipate is SpaceX's endeavor to capture the Starship itself. This innovative approach could redefine space operations as we know them. While a few additional test launches may be necessary, SpaceX is destined to achieve this goal, given the significance of Starship for humanity. The triumph of SpaceX's latest rocket is of great significance, particularly in relation to NASA's timeline for returning astronauts to the lunar surface. Starship has been chosen by the Space Agency as the lunar lander for the Artemis III mission, which aims to transport astronauts to the moon in late 2025 or early 2026. Before this mission can commence, Starship must complete a series of certification flights. Furthermore, securing certification for carrying crew remains a crucial milestone on the horizon. Today's success undoubtedly places Starship on a promising trajectory. Significantly, SpaceX's vision for Starship reaches well beyond the confines of lunar exploration. When Musk first unveiled the Starship concept, he designated it as the Mars Colonial Transporter. During the development of the system at the International Astronautical Congress in September 2016, he introduced a new designation, the Interplanetary Transport System. 
These initial designations underscore the spacecraft's fundamental objective, to enable humanity's expansion into an interplanetary species, a long-held ambition of Musk's. Despite the evolving timelines, Musk envisions Starship as the vehicle that will facilitate the establishment of a sustainable and permanent human presence beyond Earth. The pivotal breakthrough that has the potential to actualize this vision lies in the reusability of Starship. Of course, please provide the text you would like me to rewrite, and I'll be happy to assist you. This innovative system marks the next evolutionary advancement beyond SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which has integrated reusable boosters. However, Falcon 9 reusability is limited to its first stage and payload fairing, with a turnaround time of weeks. In contrast, Starship's design emphasizes complete reusability, which has the potential to revolutionize space travel and facilitate more efficient and sustainable exploration of our solar system. Starship has been cleverly engineered for complete and rapid reusability. The rocket's launch tower features two large, chopstick-like arms, cleverly designed to catch the Super Heavy as it returns to the launch pad. In addition, these arms facilitate the stacking of a landed Starship back onto the Super Heavy for its next flight. Today's launch is anticipated to catalyze an increased cadence of new vehicle deployments as the design is meticulously refined toward the launch pad in Boca Chica. Currently, this test iteration of Starship does not include a cabin or life support systems essential to housing a payload or a sustainable crew. Nonetheless, SpaceX has high confidence in the rocket's potential success. Moving forward, SpaceX is exploring the prospect of conducting Starship test flights every month. If this frequency is maintained, the spacecraft's certification for crewed launches in preparation for Ardvis 3 could be significantly increased. SpaceX's impressive track record with the Falcon 9 rocket, launching more than once a week on average for the past several years, highlights the company's dedication to increasing the frequency of its new vehicle launches. This commitment reflects not only technological advancements, but also a strategic vision for the future of space exploration. Throughout the various phases of Starship's development, Musk has consistently emphasized the spacecraft's incredible potential for rapid reusability. His vision envisions a scenario in which the same Starship vehicle launches, lands, and relaunches multiple times in a single day, eventually paving the way for the possibility of hundreds of Starship launches each week. This ambitious goal aligns perfectly with SpaceX's enduring mission to push the boundaries of spaceflight. Thanks for joining us. See you in the next episode.